When we say data science or machine learning the first thing that came to our mind is Jupyter Notebook. As machine learning engineers, we tend to use it a lot. Since it's super easy to use, allows you to code quickly and it showcases your work, you can see both your code and results at the same time. It can also be a perfect communication tool between you and your teammates. They can just run cell by cell and easily get an understanding of what the code does. But when it comes to production, should we use Jupyter Notebooks? Before digging into that, let's review what a typical machine learning pipeline looks like. So, here is our machine learning pipeline. The first step consists of importing the data from the different sources. For example, it can be a CSV file or a big data. Then, we will process this data, we may check if there are any null or duplicate values and scale some columns if needed. Once our data is clean and pre-processed, we can now train our model on a part of this data that we call a train test. Then, in order to validate the performance of our model we need to check if it returns a good prediction based on the remaining part of the data which we call the test set. Finally, if everything works fine we can deploy our model and serve it as an API for example, so it can be used by public users. Jupyter Notebooks may give us the freedom to try different experimentations and create prototypes. But once we find the best model and we want to take it into production, we need to take into account some considerations. First, we need to version control our code, which is the practice of tracking and managing changes to software code. Version control systems allow multiple developers and team members to work together on the same project. It helps them work smarter and faster. One popular version control system is GitHub. Then, we have to consider creating modular, reusable code. Modularity is one of the most crucial concepts in creating reliable applications. We need to create independent code for each part in our machine learning pipeline, which makes it easier to do some further modifications or even reuse the code later. Then, we need to test and debug our code. In simple words, testing is the process where we try to find errors and bugs in code. Whether debugging is the process where we correct the bugs that we found during the testing process. However, using Jupyter Notebooks in production can't satisfy these requirements. We can't have proper code versioning. If the notebooks include images and a lot of plots, then the file size increases considerably which is impractical to use it in a Git-like workflow. Also, notebooks don't allow us to have modular reusable code. We put most of our codes into cells. But, the good way to reuse the code in Python is through functions and classes. Testing will even be challenging using Jupyter Notebooks, we can't unit test each part smoothly. Notebooks grow dramatically in big projects and make it difficult to call specific functions from them. And despite the recent work to integrate notebooks within CI-CD pipelines, it's still not practical and reliable, especially with big projects. And we're here to discover a better way to organize our machine learning project files. Mainly we need to remove our reusable code from the Jupyter Notebooks to .py files. This will allow us to have reusable code, reproducible pipelines, and easier testing. Here is a simple example of what an organized repo looks like. We will place our Python modules in the SRC folder. For example, in the data package, the preprocessing underscore helpers.py contains functions that we will use to process our data. Then we have .py files for creating features, training the model, and etc. To conclude, organizing our files in such a manner will allow us to have clean, reusable code and clear vision about the pipeline workflow. I hope that you enjoyed the video, we are curious to know more about your personal experience with Jupyter Notebooks. What strategy you use to produce your ML systems? Tell us in the comments. To support us, don't forget to subscribe and share the video with your friends if you find it interesting. See you next time.